Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about the initial setup for Nexus Dashboard 4.1. Let's first start out with going over what you're going to need. You're going to need physical access to the server SimSees where Nexus Dashboard is going to run. You're going to need some IP addresses. So you're going to need a unique IP address per node. So that's three management IPs. You're also going to need three other data interface IPs as well. And ideally, these are on different subnets. And in some cases, they have to be different subnets. You're going to need some IP addresses for uh, what we call persistent IPs. And I will explain that a little bit later, but they are required. And of course, things like NTP DNS for the cluster to use and a proxy server is optional. Let's have a quick look at my particular lab environment. You see, I have my three physical nodes uh, and each node has a management IP assigned. Uh, I have the SIMC IP addresses. I've got the data IP address assigned on a different network and I've got all of my stuff ready to go. Uh, let's also make a quick note and point out that it's it's a very important note that when you onboard your fabrics later on, you're always going to want to onboard your fabrics through the data interface path. So we might need to adjust some routing within the system and I'll make that clear. With that being said, let's actually get to doing it live on my system. Okay, so here I am logged into the SIMC of the very first node. And you can see here I've clicked on launch KVM and that's the black window that you see in the middle. If you look at the very bottom, it says press any key to run the first boot setup on this console. So we will go ahead and hit the any key. And it's going to ask us for a few pieces of data. Uh, the first one here is it's going to ask us is for uh, the admin password. So pick an admin password that works for you and enter it. And then it will, of course, ask you to confirm that password to commit that. The very next piece of information it will ask you is what is the management IP network, uh, IP address and, and mask? So we've entered that from our cheat sheet and, of course, uh, the gateway. Uh, and this is really it. And we only have to do this on one node in the very beginning. Uh, and we review our config. And if everything is good, we hit letter N because we don't want to re-enter any configurations. And that will commit. Now, it'll take a few moments to kind of spin that up. But you'll see in just a moment, it will tell us. Uh, you're done here. Go to a web browser and go to the management IP to continue the setup. So that is exactly what we're going to do next. Okay, so here I am at the management IP address of the first node with the web browser and entering the password that we set just before. When you first log in, you'll be shown a journey and we try to gently guide you through the cluster bring up. And so we're going to do that. So it's going to ask us a few basic questions. First, we need, need to give this cluster a name. So we will choose a name. And you will also see that we need to select the type of network here. Is it LAN or is it SAN? We support both. In our case, it's LAN. So we'll go ahead and click Next. On this page, we enter the basic stuff like the DNS, the NTP, the proxy server if we're using it. So you'll see me filling out those details. Also, make sure you tick the little green uh, checkbox after each one to make sure that you commit uh, the config that you want to make. Uh, so completing this page, we'll go on and uh, click to the next. I guess we're going to skip proxy here first, and it gives us a warning. I'm not using a proxy in my lab. In this particular case, we can see a nice graphic of our very first node, and it's got the management network, the data network, and how it connects to our fabrics. Uh, that's all well and good, but we need some additional configuration. So we're going to click the pencil, and we're going to uh, complete that information for node number one. We're going to give it a name a type. It's always primary in a three node cluster. You can see we've got our management network and now we're going to set our data network and gateway. You can use VLAN tagging and if, in my case I don't, uh, but you can. So that completes our first node, but now we need to add the other two nodes and this is where the SIMC IP comes in. So we're going to enter the SIMC IP and the credentials for the SIMC and we're going to click validate. And if it works, we'll get a little green checkbox. And that will allow the first node to program all the settings on nodes two and three. So we're good to go. So we'll, just like before, we'll do the same thing, give it a name, set the type, assign a management IP and gateway, and a data network and gateway for node number two. Uh, and that's all pretty easy. It should look familiar. So now we're going to do that very same thing for node number three. And so we'll go really fast. We're going to connect to the SIMC again. We're going to validate that, and we'll enter the specific information for node number three, just like we did for the other two nodes. Uh, no mystery there. OK, so setting the primary, setting the management IP and gateway, and setting the data network IP and gateway. And we are all done now with our three node cluster. You can see uh, all the information. You can see the graphic changes as well. Everything is green. Double check your work before you click validate. And when you're ready, click the button. 
The last thing we need to do is assign persistent IPs. These are uh, dedicated IPs within the cluster meant for services that we will later run. The nice thing is you can actually put a range. And so you see me put a range and it will automatically fill out. Note, these are from the data network subnet. So we're going to review all of our information. It's all good to go and we will commit this. You will see that it's going to take a little bit of time for the cluster to kind of bootstrap itself, configure things. Uh, this you know, probably takes, uh, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes or so. So we will uh, pause the video and come back when it's done. But you can always check out what's happening at each phase. And if something goes wrong, you can actually troubleshoot. So this is uh, going on to the next phase. Uh, and I said we're going to uh, sort of pause the video here, fast forward and come back when this is all done. OK, the cluster is ready. When you first log in, we'll complete the journey by giving you a quick overview of some of the major features and what you can do with Nexus dashboard. So we'll click Next and get to the end. And we're all done. The next thing that we need to do is let's go into the Admin tab and go into System Settings. And let's kind of check out what is there. You will see that in just a second that it's pre-populated with like our DNS server, our NTP server. You can, of course, make changes here if you need to in the future. Uh, there's some other things uh, down below, like there's our persistent IPs. And you can actually see of the range that we assigned, uh, what services were assigned to those IPs. And that will be automatically done by the cluster. Now, when it comes to routes, you'll see that we have the ability to add data network routes or management network routes. In some cases, you might need to force the path through the data interface to reach uh, the fabric that you're trying to, to join uh, here. Uh, and so I'm just showing you a couple of examples of this. It's not always required, but depending on your situation, you might need to influence the routing. And this is the way that you would do it. So we'll go ahead and click Save. And we'll go back to the, the settings page. Um, so just review all of our work uh, and see there's some other settings as well. The next thing we can do is we can go into the Admin tab and we can click on System Status. This gives us a nice view of the health of the cluster itself. We can see if anything's wrong. We can check the nodes, the health, information about the nodes, the resources that are being used. And we, we can even go a little bit deeper and get some detailed graphs on things like CPU uh, and memory in storage in a very nice and easy graphical format that you will see right now. So here you can see all information about the processes and uh, things that might be interesting to you to make sure that your cluster is running in peak condition. OK, and the next thing we can't forget this is very important is we have to connect Nexus dashboard to Intersight with a device connector. So under the admin tab Intersight, you can see we need some information to do that. This is extremely important because this is how Nexus dashboard gets updates about bugs and anomalies and whatnot. So we're going to copy some of the information. We're going to log into Intersight and we're going to click Nexus dashboard as our target type. We're going to paste the information that we got from the screen before, so the device ID uh, and the claim code, and we'll paste that into Intersight. In just a second, we will click Claim, and it's as simple as that. We can add this device to Intersight and allow those updates to happen. So as we go back into Nexus Dashboard, if we hit the Refresh button, you will see everything is green, and that's exactly what you want. And you only have to do this the first time, one time. OK, the very next thing we would do is going on to the next step, which is actually adding fabrics to our environment. So that will be the topic of the next video. So I will end here by saying thank you very much.